At least once a fortnight, a corps of caterers came down with several hundred feet of canvas and enough colored lights to make a Christmas tree of Gatsby's enormous garden. On buffet, buffet tables, garnished with glistening hors d'oeuvre, spiced baked hams, crowded against salads of harlequin designs and pastry pigs and turkeys, bewitched to a dark gold. In the main hall, a bar with a real brass rail was set up and stocked with gins and liquors and with quarter cordials so long forgotten that most of his female guests were too young to know one from another. By seven o'clock, the orchestra has arrived. No thin five-piece affair, but a whole pit, pit full of oboes and trombones and saxophones and viols and cornets and piccolos and low and high drums. The last swimmers have come in from the beach now and are dressing upstairs. The cars from New York and are parked five deep in the drive, and already the halls and salons and verandas are gouty with primary colors and hair shorn in strange new ways. And shawls beyond the dreams of Castile, the bar is in full swing, and floating rounds of cocktails permeate the garden outside until the air is alive with chatter and laughter and casual innuendo and introductions forgotten on the spot, and enthusiastic meetings between women who never knew each other's names. The lights grew brighter as the earth lunches away from the sun, and now the orchestra is playing yellow cocktail music, and the opera of voices pitches a, a key higher. Laughter is easier minute by minute, spilled with prodigality, tipped out at a at a cheerful word. The groups change more swiftly, swell with new arrivals, dissolve and form the same breath. Already there are wanderers, confident girls who weave here and there among the stouter and more stable, become for a sharp, joyous moment the, the center of the group, and then excited with triumph, glide on, on through the sea change of faces and voices and, and color under the unconstantly changing light.